So um, for those of you that were not here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through this kind of step by step. So previously, before, so it's been like, I know for some of you it's been, what, crap, since like last Monday, right? Yeah. Huh? Uh, ellipse. E-L-L-I-P-S-E. So um, after your quiz, we did some basic introduction on this, and I gave you guys at least some notes on this. The notes are written up there on the board, so if you weren't here on that Monday, you can have some kind of notes there. But basically what I'm going to do is just going to walk through the problem the way that I understand it and explain it. And basically what we're looking into doing is we're going to sketch. Here, I'll write this down. For all these problems, you guys are going to sketch and identify the center, vertices, co-vertices, and foci. Okay, it's a lot of stuff. So that's why we'll start with the basic one. So on the basic one, first thing I want you guys to understand when you're doing a problem like this is to um, know which kind of E, or basically find A, because I think A, Finding A is the easiest. So based on the formula, you guys can see there's two different formulas. A is either under the x or A is under the y. So how do we know, how do we differentiate? Well, A was always, A is always larger than B, always. So that means A squared is always larger than B squared. Does everybody follow me? Yes? No? OK. So A squared equals 64. That means A, in this case, is 8. We're talking about distance, not direction for at this point in time, so we don't need to include pot plus or minus. B squared then has to be 25, so therefore B is equal to 5. Is everybody following me so far with this? Yep. And then the third type was C, and if you guys see, there's a formula up there. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So C squared equals 64 minus 25. So therefore, c is equal to 39, square root of 39. Does everybody follow at least finding a, b, and c? I think when you guys take your quiz, not next class period, class period after that, right, next class, no, not next class period. Class period after that, you can at least do a, b, and c that quickly. Now the next thing we need to do is um, identify our, our center. So the center is obviously, if you guys look at the equations, it's x minus h, y minus k, right? Remember, h is always with x, y is always with k. And you can see I'm not subtracting anything from my x and my y, so my center is just at 0, 0. Now, we're going to sketch this and identify the information. So first thing I'm going to do is sketch the center, and I'll put a nice c there so I remember that it's the center. Now, to sketch this, you guys can see I have all this stuff over here. If you guys want to memorize this stuff, go ahead and do it. To me, it's a waste of time. The best thing for me, as far as you guys doing this, is just to mentally understand what we are doing. So what does A, B, and C represent? So on your notes on Monday, I gave, A was the distance from your center to your vertices. So our A is 8. So that means the distance from my center to my vertices is 8. But I need to determine, do I go up 8, down, or it is up or down, or do I go left or right? How do I remember that? Well, if you guys remember on Monday on your notes, when A was under the x, my ellipse was elongated horizontally. When A, when the larger term was under my y, the ellipse was elongated vertically. So that elongation, that like, um, stretch is what we call our major axis. So automatically here, I see that 64 is under my x squared. So I'm going to say this is my major axis. Therefore, your minor axis is perpendicular. Now, what's important about the major and the minor axis is your vertices lie on your major axis. So my, again, how far is my vertices from my, how far are my vertices from my center? 8. So if they have to lie on this major axis, I go over 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I have to go to left 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then I will label my vertices. Now, 
Is it easy to kind of identify what these points are since I'm kind of looking at a graph? You could memorize the formulas, or you could kind of create your own graph and say, oh, this isn't that bad. The vertices are at negative 8, comma 0, and 8, comma 0. Right? They're just going left and right. Then the next thing is let's find the covertices. So the distance from the the distance from the center to your covertices is b, 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 the starting letter for bumblebee. B. The letter B. What is our value of B? 5. So from our center to our covertices is 5. If your vertices are going left and right, that means your covertices are going up and down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Covertice. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Covertice. Can we easily write down what those points are? Sure. And then last but not least is our foci, which is the distance from the center to the foci, um, or, dis or which is our C. So that's the distance from our center to our foci. Now, that doesn't look as fun square root of 38 as far as square root of 39 and graphing them, right? Yes? You said your foci is the distance from your center to your foci? Yeah, C, foci is C. C is the distance from the center to your foci. Yeah, I said it, but I didn't say it correctly. Uh, C, A, center to vertice. B, center to covertice. C, center to foci. Now, we need to know where is the foci? Where do the foci go? Foci are on the major axis, right? So, you're, so therefore, in this example, they're going left or right. So all I need to do for my foci should, if they're going left or right, that means I'm changing the x coordinate, right? Not the y coordinate. So technically, my foci are just plus or minus the square root of 39, comma, 0. You could write them separately if you wanted to. You're going to have to. Now, what if I did ask you to graph this? Would you guys know where to graph the square root of 39? Without a calculator? Mm -hmm. Sure you do. Okay. Yeah. Let's think about stuff we know. The square root of 36 is? Seven. Square root of 49 is? Seven. seven. The square root of 39 is between 36 and 49, right? Yeah. So would you guys, would it make sense then the square root of 39 is between 6 and 7? No. Yeah, so just estimate. It doesn't need to be perfect. Oh, okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 between 6 and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 between 6 and 7. Foci. That doesn't have to be exactly. No, no, no. And there you go. Nice little list. Okay?